All right, so what is a variable? A variable is like a container. Variables are container, placeholder, whatever you want to call it, elements that we can use to store data and then use that data by the variable name. So we can refer to that data by using that variable's name. So let's say, for example, I make a variable called names. Inside that, that variable, we put the name, let's say, for example, Edwin. And then we can use the name of that variable, names, to refer to that specific name. Let me show you exactly what a variable is. Variables are very powerful and they're very, they're useful. Uh, we use them in all kinds of programming languages and th it's something that you need to actually use. So let me show you exa an example how we create variables and how we use them. So let's say for example, I'm going to use the blank.php and now don't get confused by all the files you see here. You should have that in your exercise files. Alright, so I'm going to use this blank.php. I'm going to do a save as on this document and I'm going to call this variables. Sometimes I might have more files than than you depending on where you are on the lesson but all these files should be in your course exercise files alright so I'm gonna go ahead and open a PHP tag and I'm gonna close it right away so I'm going to show you exactly how we define variables. Variables are defined in a very easy format. We use a dollar sign with PHP and it changes in programming languages and some programming languages we use the word var but on this one we're gonna be using a dollar sign following the name of the variable and I just wanna name it this. I can name it whatever I want. I can even name a number if I want to. Alright so I'm just gonna name it name and then that's it. The variable is done. Now Keep in mind that this variable is empty. You're not even using this variable right now. Most of the time what you're going to see is that you're going to see the variable and you're going to see the variable declare here and assign a value right away. That's what This is the way you're going to see the variable. It's not You're never going to find it like this because variables we make it for a reason. We make them to use them to store data. So we use something called an assignment operator right here to assign the variable a name or assign it a value, right? Whatever. So we want to just assign it right now, Edwin. We use, for strings, we know we, know we use co double quotes or apostrophes, or we can use single quotes to put strings in there. All right, this is how we write strings or texts in programming languages. Most of the time, we need to put quotes around it. This is not only in PHP, but in many different programming languages. If we want to store numbers in there, actually, let me just put it, in the bottom there, let make, let's make another variable called number and we can go ahead and numbers don't have quotes this is how PHP knows is a number we don't put quotes around it alright so now how can we use these variables how can we use them well, well let's use a function called echo and let's echo this out let's open the browser by clicking on this little icon right here and we can see right now that we are displaying the name Edwin, the value Edwin, by using the variable name. So now we can refer to this data right here by using the variable name. And we can do the same thing with this one. All right? So now, how, what are the typical use, how we usually write variables? Well, this is the normal syntax. All right? Syntax, I mean the way you write it. You can write variables like this, all capital if you want. Uh, you can put the first capital, you can put an underscore, and then you can just name it like this, however you want. You can name it, you can name it however you think is good for you. Now, the best for best practices, the best way to write is all lowercase, and then if you have a second word, you uppercase the first letter, and then you can finish writing in all lowercase. This is the first, the, the best format to write variables. Another format that I use is this one, underscore list. And sometimes I uppercase this one here. All right, you will see it like this. Okay. We see it very often like this. There are many different ways. Don't do this. This is a bad format. As a matter of fact, I'm going to write them down. This is okay. I'm going to write that. 
All right, this is not okay, what I'm about to do right now. This one here. Don't write your variables like this. The reason is because it can it can be it can get confused by thinking that you are subtracting something from from something. So this is a bad format. You cannot start a variable with a number like this. It will not work. Just know you see we got an error right here as long when I wrote that. Okay. We got an error right here also. And now we're good. You see this is a bad format. I'm just gonna comment this out. We can also keep in mind that when you write a variable, keep in mind that this variable, I'm going to write it right here. This variable and this variable are different even though they are named the same. The reason is because it's case sensitive. So any word, any letter that you change here will make this variable different from this one. All right, so even if you have something like this and you just have this one lowercase this is a totally different variable than this right here alright I mean, you can play around with it and find out for yourself there alright there are many different ways we can uh, declare variables but make sure they don't have a number they make sure they don't have hyphen in between Right, and always make sure that you write the same variable again if you want to use it. Make sure that you write it exactly the same if it, if you are referring to the same variable. Okay, so now we can store many different data data types in here. And what are data types? Well, we have many different data types in programming. This is a string data type, tets, right? We have numbers. This is an integer, and we could also have a floating point number that's what it's called because it has a decimal place right here now this type of numbers in PHP are take more memory right because we have a decimal point so PHP needs to do a little bit more processing for this type of numbers keep in mind that once if you enclose this numbers in quotes and apostrophes you change the data type to a string to a tets all right so now PHP is going to treat this as a, as a string, not as a number. So even though PHP will kind of sometimes represent this as a number, it would, it would think that it is a string. Even though you can still add this, num this string with another string and PHP will still do it. But in most cases, it will not do it. So you cannot make calculations like you can make with the data number type, right? because this is a string PHP is not going to allow that in some cases it will in some cases it will not so better get used to it when you write in numbers never put quotes around it okay another thing that I wanted to talk to you about is concatenation and I'm gonna take this moment here to talk to you about that the reason because I don't need to make another video just to tell you that you can put data together in PHP with a dot which is called concatenation and for example this variable here is has this value I want to put this value Edwin right which is the, this value I want to put it together with a number 100 so I'm gonna copy this variable right here I put a dot right here and I'm just gonna copy it there and as you can see here you already printed out 100 for me because that is the value right here for this variable Okay, now it is, all, it is all together. We can put a little separation there by concatenating a string, an empty string. And as you can see, it moved, up, it moved a little bit to the right. So as you can see, this concatenation will smash words together. It will put words, it would not only put words, but any data type that you, you know, you can, you want to put together, use a dot. Make sure that you have a dot between this element and the other element right here All right right now we have a string in between here so we need another that concatenation there to concatenate the string with the variable okay of course you can this is how you put things together All right, just letting you know another thing that you can do also and I will probably show you as a matter of fact I will show you in another video here I think we are we are good with time here so um, 
this is it. This is it. That's it. That's it. That, as a matter of fact, let me just show you a couple more things, actually. Let me take one minute to do. All right. So we know that we with this function, we can, we can also use, let me just write another variable here. We can put all kinds of data I told you about, and we can put HTML in there. So we can write something like this. Hello. Put an HTML H1 tag in there and close it right here. All right. And this is going to do two things, and I'm going to show you what they're going to do right now. Look at this. So we were able to use an HTML tag inside a string and put it and assign it to this variable right here. And we were able to display it below. So we can assign HTML tags to variables. Keep that in mind. We can assign images to variables. Right? We can assign many different types of data into a variable. But always make always keep in mind that we can only assign one value at a time. We cannot go ahead and put a comma here and put another comma and assign different values. Like we can't assign, you know, we can't assign different values. And I will let you know how that works later on when we talk about arrays. All right? So just keep in mind that you can only assign one value with, with variables. Later on, we're going to be talking about another different type of variable that we can assign multiple values to it. All right? So keep that in mind. Anyway, I hope you were able to get some valuable knowledge out of this lesson, and I'll see you in the next lecture. Take care.